Hi, I'm Vijay Karmaji, Specialist Database Solutions Architect here at AWS. Today I'm going to show you how IAM authentication works with Amazon Aurora MySQL. First of all, Amazon Aurora is a relational database built for the cloud. It combines the performance and high availability of the traditional enterprise databases with simplicity and cost effectiveness of the open source database engines. Aurora is compatible with MySQL and Postgres database engines and delivered as a managed service. That automates the time-consuming administrative tasks such as hardware provisioning, database setup, patching, and backups. One of the key Aurora feature is distributed, fault-tolerant, and self-healing storage subsystem that can automatically scale up to 64 terabytes. Aurora can leverage the AWS cloud ecosystem. Aurora MySQL tightly integrated with other services so that you can extend your Aurora cluster to use additional capabilities in the AWS cloud. Using AWS Lambda, you can invoke Lambda functions uh, using negative stored procedures and triggers. Using Amazon S3, you can load data from S3 and save data to S3. Besides that, Aurora backs up the cluster volumes to S3 continuously. Using IAM roles and uh, users, you can uh, manage database access controls. You can configure your Aurora MySQL DB cluster to publish general slow query, audit, and error logs to CloudWatch. With these logs in CloudWatch, you can perform real-time analysis of the log data and use CloudWatch to create alarms and view metrics. Aurora MySQL supports uh, machine learning uh, directly from the uh, database using simple SQL queries. This simplifies developing uh, database applications that use Amazon SageMaker uh, and Amazon Comprehend services uh, to perform uh, any predictions. Let's look into IMDB authentication. In IMDB authentication, each MySQL DB user is mapped to an IAM user or a role and it authenticates using IAM role or a user. When we use IAM authentication method to connect to a DB cluster, you don't need to use a password because authentication is uh, managed externally using IAM. Instead of password, you can use an authentication token. An authentication token is a unique uh, string of characters that Amazon Aurora generates on request and uh, it has a lifetime of 15 minutes. IAM authentication works with both versions of Aurora, MySQL and Postgres. At the same time, we can also use IAM authentication in RDS, MySQL and Postgres. Now let's look into the advantages. Easy to manage IAM rules instead of uh, managing access individually on each DB cluster. If applications running on EC2, we can avoid hard-coded AWS IAM user credentials such as access key ID and a secret access key. Um, instead, we can use uh, instance profile credentials specific to your EC2 instance to access the DB cluster. Also, the network traffic to and from, from the database is encrypted using a secure socket layer and it is easy to enable IAM authentication feature on Aurora cluster by simply modifying the cluster and uh, it does not require any downtime. Now let me take you through the demo on uh, how to enable IAM authentication on the Aurora cluster and then we're going to create a database user and then create an IAM role and add an IAM policy that maps the database user to the IAM role attach that IAM role to an EC2 instance and then we're going to download an SSL root certificate we're going to use that root certificate to connect to uh, Aurora cluster after we generate the IAM authentication token for this demo I have already created an Aurora MySQL cluster in US East 1 region with one writer and one reader. So let's enable IAM authentication on this cluster. Before enable it, let's click on the cluster. 
look into the configurations of the cluster. As you can see, IAM authentication is not enabled by default. To enable IAM authentication, I'll modify the DB cluster. Scroll down to database options. Choose enable DB authentication. Scroll down. Click on continue. In the summary of the modifications, you can see we are just enabling the IMDB authentication. We're not doing any other changes. So as IMDB authentication uh, does not require any reboot, let's click on apply immediately and then click on modify cluster. During the cluster modification, we can observe that status of the cluster is configuring IAM database authentication. Once the DB cluster modification is complete, uh, we can see the status is now available state and under the configurations, we can see IAM DB authentication as enabled. Once we enable IAM DB authentication on the Aurora MySQL cluster, in the next step, we're going to connect to the uh, DB cluster and then create a database user. In a terminal window, I'm going to connect to Aurora MySQL cluster and create a database user. I have created the MyDB user. Now let's look into the user information. So you can see the username is MyDB user and it is created with AWS authentication plugin. With MySQL, authentication is handled by AWS authentication plugin. This is AWS provided plugin that works seamlessly with IAM to authenticate uh, to your IAM role. Now that we created a DB user, let's create an IAM role and associate with it. From the AWS management console, under the services, open the IAM service in the IAM service, under the access management, choose roles and click on create new role. In the create role section, select AWS service as a trusted entity and select EC2 as a use case and click next permissions. As we are going to attach this role to our EC2 instance, if your EC2 instance requires specific permissions from these managed policies, you can choose the required policies. But for this demo, I'm going to choose Amazon RDS read-only access. So let me search with RDS and then select RDS read-only access. Next tags, tags are optional, so next review give the name of the role and then create role to allow this IAM role to connect to the DB cluster and map the DB user that we created with this role let's create an IAM policy and attach that policy to this role to create an IAM policy under the access management choose policies and then click on create policy Add the required IAM policy, which is available in the public documentation. By looking at the policy, we can see effect allow, which grants access to the DB cluster. Action RDS DB connect, which allows connections to the DB cluster. In the resource section, we need to replace the region, is the AWS region for the DB cluster and the account ID for the uh, DB cluster, uh, DPI resource ID, which is the DB cluster resource ID from the DB cluster. And then the DB username. The DB username is the uh, database user account that we created. Once you construct the required information for the policy, then click on review policy and then create the policy. Once you create the policy, go to the roles, and then choose the policy and then attach the policy 
to that role. Now that we have an IAM role with required permissions, as a next step, attach this role to an EC2 instance. For that, from the AWS Management Console, under the Services, open the EC2 service. You'll see there is one running instance. For this demo, I have already created an EC2 instance. So select the instance under the Actions, under Instance Settings, click on Attach IAM Role. In the Attach IAM Role, choose the IAM Role and then click on Apply. Now that we have successfully attached the IAM Role, let's log on to the EC2 instance and connect to the Aurora DB cluster. To connect to the Aurora MySQL DB cluster using SSL connection, download the root certificate bundle using the command wget from the S3 location. This root certificate will be used as a parameter in the connection string while connecting to the Aurora DB cluster. Now that we have downloaded the root certificate, let's generate the authentication token and connect to the Aurora DB cluster. To generate the authentication token, we need to run an AWS CLI command. So make sure you have installed and configured the AWS CLI on your terminal. For this demo, I have already installed the AWS CLI. So let's run the command. This authentication token is valid for 15 minutes before it expires. So if you try to connect using an expired token, the connection request is denied. And as you see, um, the authentication token consists of several hundred characters. It can be clumsy on the command line when we pass this as a password. So let's export the token into an environment variable and then use that variable to connect. Now that we exported the Aurora DB cluster endpoint and then a token uh, into an, an environment variable, let's try to connect. To connect to the Aurora MySQL DB cluster using SSL connection, we are using the certificate bundle that we downloaded and authentication token as a password for the DB user. As you can see, we have successfully connected to the DB cluster using the IAM role credentials and an authentication token. In this video, we learned that you can authenticate to your Aurora MySQL DB clusters using AWS Identity and Access Management database authentication. With this authentication method, you don't need to use a password when you connect to your DB cluster. Instead, we have used an authentication token and the token has a lifetime of 15 minutes, so you don't need to store user credentials in the database because authentication is managed externally using IAM. And also we have seen that network traffic to and from the database is encrypted using SSL. For that, we have downloaded the root certificate bundle from S3 and used that as part of our connection string. And for the applications running on EC2, you can use profile credentials specific to your EC2 instance to access your database instead of a password, so which provides greater security to your applications. And finally, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. We are always here to help. You can reach me for questions at the email address on the screen. Happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.